GHS 90 St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 13. John 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not, save to wash his feet, 
but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. I speak not of you all, I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled, He that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you, before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified, and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him, that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then, lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow, till thou hast denied me thrice. John 14 Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? 
Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom ye neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. May God help us to be do
healing, deliverance. Do the impossible in every life in Jesus' name. Call to salvation. Consecrated for revival, healing, and deliverances. For every gospel crusade, people run to Jesus and joy fills the air. This aptly describes the man, William Folorusho Kumui. Understand the secret? When you hear the word, you do not receive it as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God. The one to give you super abundant living has now come. A man amiable and humble. Kumuyi ascribes all glory to God for successes in his life and ministry. A man who is passionate about humanity and known for his stand on holiness and righteousness. Where is holiness if there's no obedience? When you hear the word, you obey the word. Kumuyi has consistently emphasized that repentance through God in the name of Jesus Christ remains the solution to problems of humanity and indeed the world. A father has raised up, has appointed Jesus as the divine connector. You mention that name, you'll be connected immediately. You want to have this reconnection with the Almighty God through the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are, just raise up your hand. I receive the Lord as my personal savior i pray you receive all these people now in jesus name healing deliverance do the impossible in every life in jesus name hearing since i was born but today now i can't hear i can't hear everything now it does happen I'm being paralyzed. I'm, I cannot move with that rich using crosses. God swim me through. I thank God for the miracle the Lord has done for in my life. See her walking. 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 Put her together. A reformer who not only considers his fiscal audience, but personally reached out to the online audience at a time that most countries of the world face the effect of global recession and global warming pastor dr w f kumui decided to rally help for the needy across the world my mind also is on uh, is with the online people i've been praying for them that those who are online will really have a definite visitation of god and a definite touch kumui had a live broadcast in a global call for divine connection to Jesus, live from Abuja, Nigeria, and online to the world. He emphasized the need for humanity to become sober and repentant for a new start. And that connection led to liberation, as stories of sadness and gloom turned to joy and good. The April program led to another live broadcast in July 2021. This link from Calabar, South South Nigeria, to the world, their social media produced an avalanche of signs and wonders. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Praise the Lord! Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi is clearly a gift from God, a gift that keeps on giving. At 80 years of age, he has shown consistency and commitment to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world from Asia to America Africa Europe and practically the entire world I just want to thank God every day and praise our Lord that he showed me deeper life Bible Church and I want to thank Dr. W. F. Kumai for changing my way of thinking of Jesus Christ the story is the same Kumi goes everywhere with the name of Jesus and just as it's highlighted about Jesus in scriptures Everywhere he went, he keeps doing good with signs following. At this global crusade, the international evangelist, Pastor Dr. William Kumui, 
will be ministering live along with special ministration in songs by an international artist. Hey friends, Don Moen here, and I want to invite you to join me at the Divine Touch for Total Freedom Global Crusade, where I'll be leading worship with Pastor William Kumuyi of Deeper Christian Life Ministries. This event will be streamed live to the world from August 26th through August 31st, 2021 at 1600 hours GMT daily with a special Sunday worship service scheduled at 0700 GMT. So as we come together to worship and build a throne for God with our praise, He will be with us to heal, to save, to deliver, to provide for every need, to give us His divine touch for total freedom. So invite your friends and family and join us August 26th through August 31st for the Divine Touch for Total Freedom Global Crusade. Go to www.dclm.org to learn more and we look forward to seeing you there. A torch transformation is coming your way. A global crusade with an international minister of God, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi, ministering live, and Don Moen, world renowned gospel artist, also ministering in songs. My God is mighty to save. From Enugu, Southeast Nigeria, West Africa, alive to the world, their satellite, and all our social media platforms. Thursday, August 26 to Tuesday, August 31, 5 p.m. daily. Saturday 4 p.m. and Sunday worship service 8 a.m. with evening revival at 5 p.m. This is one touch that guarantees a beautiful life. There'll be a manifestation in every life, joy in every family. Get connected to a divine touch with God's general, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui. One touch and you are made whole. Church, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will bless your heart, bless your soul, and bless your life in Jesus' name. Are you ready for blessing? Say, I am ready. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your spirit. We thank you because you are alive and you are mightily present here. We pray, Lord, you expose and expound your word to everyone at the point of our need today in Jesus' name. And we pray you enrich every life and reach every believer. And those who are coming for the first time, I pray, Lord, their portion of blessing you grant unto them in Jesus' name. And for pastors and leaders, workers, members, everybody, Lord, I pray none of us will go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name. The blessing in the word, and the prophecy in the word, and the promise in the word will be ours one by one in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray give God another amen before you sit down. We're coming to James chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 13. James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. You missed an amen there. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, tell me, availeth much. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And he drank not on the earth 
by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth a fruit today as we look at those verses of scripture it talks to the believer it talks to the sick it talks to those who are suffering and it gives us the promises of god and it gives us assurance that as you call upon the lord your prayer will be answered that as i call upon the name of the lord for myself for you for the church for anyone in need there is assurance that god says he will answer he will wipe away our tears he will take away our sorrows all the challenges and all the bodies we have our time of release has now come and for every afflicted saint and for everyone in any adverse situation and anyone that is going through some challenges in life these are verses that give us assurance that that thing will not last for long it will not last beyond the prayer of faith it will not last beyond the mention of the name of jesus it will not last beyond the day we take hold of the horns of the altar and we say today i will be blessed and today those problems are gone in jesus name look at that verse 16 again confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much as we look at these verses of scripture i'm talking to you today on the power of faith and perseverance in prayer the power of faith and perseverance in prayer there are three things we're looking at number one the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint there's no murmuring there's no despair there's no discouragement and there is no spirit of running away running away from home running away from the church running away from god and there is no allowance for suicide there's no allowance for destroying ourselves there is patient perseverance of the afflicted saint point number two the precious promises for adverse situations the situations will come across they are the crossroads of life is there for the young is there for the middle-aged person is there for the believer is there for the unbeliever is there for leaders is there for followers is there for even a family and sometimes it's there for a local church and for the old church adverse situations and yet there are promises in the word of god and as we look at those promises in the word of god for adverse situations i need to tell you something just reading them will bring performance in your life just hearing them i didn't know that was there it gives you hope it energizes your faith and then it broadens your rising then you understand although you thought you were cornered you thought you were confined you thought you were hedged in the promises of god will open the door wide before you and tell you here is the way of escape and you rise up you escape every adverse situation in jesus name the precious promises for adverse situations number three the powerful prayer
kinds of prayer many different kinds of prayer but there is one that is prevailing there is one that is powerful there is one that removes every mountain the powerful prayer of his appointed servants his appointed his servants like in the in the days of old he appointed the moses for the children of israel bring them out of the captivity and because that's the will of the lord it was done you will come out out of every prison you will come out and out of every predicament out of every confinement you're coming out in jesus name appointed servants of the lord appointed in a family like the father in a family appointed over a local church like the local pastor in that local church appointed by god over the general church you might even call it a national church and when that one appointed by god when he prays for the people he is appointed over there's going to be explosion of power and I can tell you there's a spiritual supernatural bulldozer caterpillar that will shake everything shakeable in your life, that will remove every mountain in your life, that will crush the power of evil in your life. And today, everything that binds you will be broken down in Jesus' name. The powerful prayer of his appointed servants. Come to point number one. Point number one. The patient perseverance of the afflicted saint. We're coming back to James chapter 5. And I read from verse 7. James chapter 5 verse 7. It says, be patient therefore, brethren children of God, saints of God, afflicted saints, be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain, until the church until the people of God, until the flock of God receive the early rain and the latter rain. There will be showers of blessing. Be also patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one another. You know, it's so easy when there are problems. Where are challenges? Where is affliction? And we don't know where the problems are coming from. We don't know where the challenges are coming from. And we don't know where the affliction is coming from. And you examine your heart, you examine your life, you examine your surrounding, you examine your actions, and you say, I, I can't find the reason for this. It's very easy then to begin to grudge innocent people, grudge even people who are a blessing to you and begin to grudge people that you think because you don't know who is causing the affliction and therefore you grudge this and grudge that even the people that stretch hands of help and hope to you you grudge them so easy but you'll stop grudging anybody did you say amen to that grudge not one another the problem is not from them but the solution is coming from on high you'll overcome that devil that is causing the problem those demons causing the problem you'll overcome them your brother is not your problem your sister is not your problem your a fellow believer is not your problem grudge not one against another brethren 
lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth at the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, those who have gone before us, take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction. It says you are not the first person to go through the kind of thing you are going through. Others have gone through and they went through successfully and they have blazed the trail, the path before us. And if they overcame, thank God, I see an overcomer before me there. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Take them for an example of suffering affliction and of Patience. Behold, we count them happy. It tells us which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. And you will not go through, you cannot go through one percent, one over hundred of what Job went through. And yet he was patient. You have heard of the patience of Job, and you have seen the end, that means the outcome, the performance, the result, the conclusion by the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies. He just spoke about Job now. He had problem Job. And the wife was not the problem. The friends were not the problem. The servants were not the problem. The problem was Satan. But he didn't know. He didn't know. Like many people today, challenge, affliction, problem, all we see is the roaring of the sea. All we see is the noise in the air. All we see is the turmoil and the confusion and the conflict in the land. I was think is this or that or that causing the problem. It was Satan. But even though he didn't know, was seeing the patience of Job. The patient perseverance of the afflicted saint. Job chapter 1. I read from verse 20 patient perseverance and job is given to us as a worthy example by the spirit of the lord job chapter 1 verse 20 then job arose and ranged his mantle and shaved his head and he fell upon the ground tell me and worshiped you know there are people they will not come to worship at such a time. Look at what happened to the family. Look at the one that died. Look at the fire that burnt everything that he had. And look at all the servants destroyed. Look at all his cattle, all his herds destroyed. The people that will say, if life is like this, no more worship, no more prayer, no more singing, no more serving the Lord. And he worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, he said, when I came into this world, I didn't have anything. I didn't have shelter. I didn't have job. I didn't have money. I didn't have servants. I didn't have cattle. I didn't have all these things that the fire destroyed. Okay, the Lord gave. I didn't force him to give me. He gave me of his own free volition. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. He said, what's the big deal? He gave me and he had his reasons for giving me and he's taking it away. And he has his reason for taking it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray God will give us grace. In the New Testament, we have greater grace 
greater understanding, greater knowledge. And we see Calvary. And we see the provision of Calvary. And Job never saw anything like that. And yet he had patient perseverance in his affliction. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. James tells us, we've seen the patience of Job. And we've seen the end result from the Lord. Job chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. Job chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain than integrity cause God and die. Hold on. Before you condemn the wife of Job. All their children had died as the house fell on them. Ten of them. In chapter 1. She said nothing. All the cattle, all the herds, all the property, everything, fire came from the sky. And the person that, re that reported that said, the fire of God came down, burnt everything. She said nothing. All the servants were gone. All the children were gone. The property, the building is gone. A home. And the bundle of joy she had, everything had gone. She said nothing. Only Job said, God gave, God has taken away. She was quiet. And now in chapter 2, the sin descended on the husband Job. Boils all over, pains all over, scratching himself with his support shed. And he was lying on ashes. And when she saw her husband Job in that condition, he said, are you still going to hold on to integrity, sincerity, faithfulness, righteousness, holiness? And you're still going to remain steadfast? This is too much. She couldn't go to the end of the road. Well, thank God for Job. Thank you for my brother. Thank God for my brother there. Thank God for my sister there. You'll get to the end of the road. Yeah. We're going to see the end of this matter. Yeah. This affliction will not be forever. Yeah. We're not going to open our mouth and say anything negative against God, against Christ, against the Holy Ghost, against the Bible, against the church, against leadership, against our family, Whatever it takes, we seal up our mouth. And we look up to God and we know our hell is near. It's as near as the end of the service today. Verse 10, and he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. I thought, I, I didn't know you could say that. For me to curse God, if I curse God and die, you want to send me to hell. It means I abandon God, I curse God, I push God away, and then he kills me, I die, and I go to hell. How could you talk like that? What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Let me come back to the wife. What she said, she took it back. As the husband said, you talk like one of the foolish women. I expected something higher, something greater from you you shouldn't have said that there was no reply and there was no insult no assault there was no complaint 
she didn't say okay if that's the way you want to live you want to keep serving god in this condition count me out i pack my load and go they didn't separate you know and they didn't divorce and the woman never opened her mouth at any other time to say anything negative and at the end of Job, the book of Job, when God rebuked the three friends of Job, who spoke and spoke and spoke, he never, God the Almighty and God the righteous judge never said anything against the wife. She said it because of the condition. She was sorry when the husband replied her. I shouldn't have said that. And she kept quiet all the way through. She was still the one preparing this food. She was still the one preparing, bringing the water. She was still the one taking care of those three friends that came to Job. Eventually, just one sentence in a moment of time and don't condemn her permanently it wasn't a permanent situation with her she kept her mouth for the rest of the time maybe you said something foolish yesterday or last week or last month you repented of it god has forgiven and forgotten it will not be remembered against you anymore in jesus name Chapter 5 of Job. I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 5, verse 6. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God. I would seek unto God. I'm not going to run away from God because of the trouble sparking up here, sparking up there. And every part of the body is feeling a burning sensation. As it's as if fire is burning. One, one would even prefer to die than to live. All the same, I would seek unto, the, unto God. Unto God will I commit my case, which doeth great things and unsearchable marvelous things without number i am still expectant and today whatever you have gone through and whatever problem you have brought here i am expectant for you and you must be expectant for yourself in jesus name Amen. chapter 13 of job you have heard and now you are hearing of the patience of Job. Look at this, chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 15. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. It's my hope, my final hope. It's my hope, my only hope. It's my hope. It's the one that created me. He brought me here for a purpose. And until I finish, what he created me for is not going to get rid of me. And though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Amen. In verse 16, he also shall be my salvation. My salvation, it will save me. He has saved me from sin. He has saved me from suffering. For an hypocrite shall not come before him. Amen. Amen. Chapter 23. Job. Chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 8. Job chapter 23. Verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, and I cannot perceive him. He says, I remember in the past, I used to go to that place to pray. I'm going there. And then I go forward, I get there, I pray. Heaven is sealed up. I said, Okay, I remember. I used to go to that place at the backyard, and I will pray, and God will answer. And I go there, and I cannot perceive him. 
on the left hand in verse 9 where he does work but i cannot behold him he hides himself on the right hand and i cannot see him god where are you the affliction is much the heat is coming to a great kind of degree i cannot bear this i'm looking for you i'm searching for you but he knows the way that i take and when he has tried me i shall come forth as gold don't lose hope i said don't lose hope don't give up help is on the way verse 11 my food has held his steps his ways have i kept and not declined neither have i gone back from the commandment of his leaves you know when people have problems not up to the problems of job they stop reading the bible i've read enough bible if i think of all the bible i've read and all the verses i've heard since i started coming to this church everything has filled my brain has filled my heart but where am i what has it got me to or am I still reading the Bible? Are you coming for the Bible study? Are you joking? If you know what's happening to me, and if you know how penniless I am, to even go to the groceries to buy what I will eat, if you know my condition, you'll not be asking me a Bible study. But you know, Job, he said, I'll go to the Bible study if I can. I'll hear the words all the same. I read the Bible all the same problems will not alarm me and all those things will not crush me it says in verse 12 neither have I gone back from the commandment of his mouth I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food chapter 36 we're looking at Job chapter 36 and i'm reading from verse 7 job 36 verse 7 he withdraws not his eyes from the righteous but what kings are they on the throne yea he doth establish them forever and they are exalted you are coming to the end of that affliction you are getting nearer and nearer the exaltation and you are going to experience that establishment that he promised in jesus name verse eight and if they be bound in fetters and beholding in cords of affliction then he shows them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded look at verse 10 he opens also their ear to instruction to di to discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures verse 15 he delivers the poor in his affliction and openeth their ears in oppression i will say amen over here and you know what james said he said you have heard now we have read of the patience of job and you have seen the end of the lord that the lord is pitiful is compassionate and he will not allow that thing that affliction to carry on for all eternity look at job now chapter 42 verse one there's nothing that has a beginning which does not have an end did you hear that the pain 
at the beginning is going to have an end. The sickness at the beginning is going to have an end. Affliction, sorrow, suffering, it began at a point in time, it's going to end at a point in time. We're getting ready to rejoice. Getting ready to celebrate. Look at Job. Job chapter 42, verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know, I know, I know that thou canst do everything. And that no thought can be withholding from thee. Look up here, brothers and sisters. What Job knew, he just didn't know now. He knew that all along. The friends that engaged him, talking, 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 didn't allow him to put into effect what he knew. It was like he was forgetting himself. Once in a while, he had come out of the ocean, of the ocean of argument, and he'll say something bright and something good, but then another one will talk again. And they made him forget what he knew. But now they are quiet. And God alone was talking to him. You know, in affliction, sometimes we make the mistake. We knock at this person's door. I'm going through this. We knock at this other person's door. I'm going through this. And they talk and talk and talk. And the things they say, they divert our attention from the knowledge we have. And the knowledge we have is enough to bring solution to any kind of problem that may come to our lives. The promises we have, they're great enough. They're mighty enough. And they're many enough. And they're deep enough. And they are heavenly and high enough to bring solution to every problem that may come our way. But the people that talk and talk and talk, they talk us out of the knowledge we have. Let them all keep quiet. And let the Spirit of God speak inside you. You will come out of the problem. Look at verse 2. I know that thou canst do everything how many things how many things can god do in your life i said how many things can god do in your life and that no thought can be withholding from thee who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge therefore have i altered that i understood not Things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. God talking to him now. Now he said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eyes see thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 7, and it was so, and it will be so. In your life, it will be so. In your family, it will be so. And it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee. Against thy two friends, for ye have not spoken of me, the sin that is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves. A bond offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. God will answer the prayer of Job. 
You know, many times you read the Bible and you just read, read, and then you pass over. You're too much in a hurry. Impatient heart, be still. What though it tarries long? What though the triumph song has not been sung? Yet he will come. He will not tarry. And so be still, be still. Impatient heart, be still. Don't be too much in a hurry. You know, in chapter 1, God said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? In chapter 2, God said unto Satan, Have you seen my servant Job? At the beginning, my servant Job. At the end, my servant Job. And so all that happened in between did not cancel the title and did not cancel the testimony and did not cancel the word of the Lord concerning Job, my servant Job. I pray that affliction will not cancel your kingdom title testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 9, so he life as the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and so far, the Nehemathite went and did as the Lord commanded them. And the Lord accepted tell me job and the lord turned the captivity of job and when he prayed for his friends also the lord tell me tell me i want to hear this one from somebody's mouth talk like a preacher now where are you Gave Job twice as much as he had before. Can I tell you, you are going to have double portion? Yeah. Of everything you have lost, double portion? Yeah. Of the seed they took away violently from you, double portion? Yeah. Of the seed your friends and your neighbors and family people are saying, you see yourself now, you see yourself now, that thing is gone don't worry about what they say. God says a double portion is coming for you. Let's come back to James chapter 5. Point number 2 now. The precious promises for adverse situations. The precious promises for adverse situations. I'm reading from James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. It tells us here, any affliction? There are promises of God that show us, that assure us that if affliction comes, it's going to go back the way it came. I said it's going to go back the way it came. And if you have experienced affliction, you're now about to receive the fulfillment of the promises of God, precious promises of God for adverse situations, it will set you free. Remember what I said at the beginning, just hearing the promise, not too much prayer, hearing the promise that affliction will flee away. Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. How many afflictions are you free from today? The Lord will deliver you from them all. All, all, the Lord is talking about you. The Lord is thinking about you. 
and your afflictions will vanish away in Jesus' name. Even if you cost it by yourself, now that you realize and come to the Lord, the Lord will forgive your foolishness. And all that affliction you caused by yourself, it will be taken away in Jesus' name. If evil powers, evil people have caused it in your life, the Lord will silence those evil people. And you know, look up here. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I have to, you know, if I hold my fingers and hold my arm, you know, communication will not go well. And so I have to move my hand. You understand? And so when I say, if it comes from them, and you say, why is he pointing to me? I'm not pointing to you. I'm pointing to them outside. Am I pointing to you? Are you the cause of anybody's problem? No, you are the solution. And the solution will come through you in Jesus' name. But look at this, look at this. James chapter 5, verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. You see, Mary, let him sing psalms. You see, the many people, they delay their singing. They say, I cannot sing now. Or maybe they try and manage to sing in church. I'm a member of the youth choir, and so I will still do my duty. I will sing, praise the Lord, but go beyond that. I mean, I'm a member of the adult choir. I will still do my part and sing, praise the Lord, but go beyond that in the dungeon. In the pitch where you are bethrown, in that prison, sing unto the Lord. Your song will break the bars of iron. You remember, never give up, never give up, never give up to your sorrows. Jesus will bid them depart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Listen to this. Sing when your trials are greatest. Sing when your trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take heart. It is at the time, at that point, that problem is still there. That challenge is still there. That affliction is still there. Sing when your trials are greatest. Sing unto the Lord. Trust Him and take heart after you have prayed. And maybe you have fasted. And maybe you have asked other people to make intercession for you. And it appears nothing has happened. Switch over into singing. Did you hear that? Switch over into singing and then before you sing one two stanzas of a favorite song you know very well everything that's called problem will collapse in your life point number three now the powerful prayer of his appointed servants and let me show you something come to verse 13 and see the word we're looking for the word pray or prayer the same thing pray or prayer pray verse 13 look at the word is any among you afflicted let him pray look at verse 14 is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him prayer prayer and then it goes on to say look at verse 15 now and the prayer of faith shall save the sick it's there in every verse look at verse 16 confess your faults one to another and pray one for another you see that again and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much look at verse 17 elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly. He prayed prayer everywhere. Look at verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought 
falls her fruit in all those verses from verse 13 all through to verse 18 there's prayer on every bench on every chair and every every level there's going to be prayer today in every section every section there's going to be prayer today and the prayer will pray on every seat there in every place there at every level there everyone pray today praise the lord the lord has answered your prayer look at verse 13 is any among you afflicted let him pray we call that personal prayer personal prayer you're afflicted don't cry pray you have a problem don't shed tears pray let him pray that's personal prayer and the lord will answer every personal prayer here today in jesus name psalm 66 and i'm reading from verse 18 66 verse 18 if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me but verily truly certainly assuredly god has heard me and he has attended to the voice of my prayer he will attend to the voice of your prayer number one personal prayer come to verse 14 is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the lord that's called pastoral prayer pastoral prayer you belong to the church and there are elders in the church and as the elders in the church as the pastors in the church and as i pray for you today god will answer the prayer but i want to show you something about the elders of the church praying i pray god will open your eyes of understanding give me a good amen and God will open your heart to face in Jesus' name. Look at Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Genesis chapter 20, verse 7. Now therefore, restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee. He shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. Did I hear an amen? amen? We need to understand this. Abraham still had his own family problem. Abraham did not have the promised child yet. Sarah was still barren. And yet, God said, Abimelech, you know what? the one you may be looking at who has not got all his own problems solved i've given him authority to pray for you and your family and you and your family will be healed you know sometimes because we know our pastors our elders and we say i know him he has this problem and this problem and he's been trying to claim the promise of god and he has not claimed the promise and he has not got it how can i go the reason you go is because god said is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church whatever you know about him about her he will pray for you your problem will be solved look at this other side now abraham had his own challenge he's been waiting for the promised child isaac and the promised child has not come and somebody is coming to me pray for me abraham could have said ah you think you have a problem 
I have my own problem too. I've been waiting for 24 years and the problem has not been solved. And you want me to pray for you? Some people say, how can I go out and witness and testify and talk to people and encourage them and say, come to the Lord? They will say, uh-huh, but we know you in this community. We know your problem. And because of that, they will not. But Abraham prayed. And when Abraham prayed, in the next chapter, chapter 21, the long-standing problem in the family of Abraham was totally removed. Abimelech was healed in chapter 20, and the miracle child came in chapter 21. If you're a leader, if you're a pastor, if you're an elder, and you say, I have my own problem, how can I pray for the people? Go ahead and pray for them. In the next chapter, in the next chapter your solution has also come. Let me just remind you of Job. You read it when you get back home. God told the friends, I'm against you. My wrath is against you. Therefore, go to Job, my servant. He will pray for you. And Job had not been healed. Job still had his own problem. And they now came to him and they said, The Lord said, you should pray for us. But you know my problem. Are you mocking me? But you know my challenge. How can I pray for you? And I've just been telling you, I went forward. I couldn't find him. I went back. I couldn't find I went everywhere I used to see him. I couldn't find him. And I'm the one to pray for you. Yes, God has appointed you. He prayed for them in verse 9. In verse 10, God reversed his captivity. Go ahead and pray for them. In the next verse, God is going to reverse your situation. Come back to James chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 15. In verse 15, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Number three. That's powerful prayer. Powerful prayer. It's a powerful prayer that has two edges. The two edges of the sword. Sickness healed and sins forgiven. And the prayer we pray today will be a powerful prayer. Every sin you confess to the Lord and you repent of, it will forgive you in Jesus' name. And then any sickness in your body, it will heal you in Jesus' name. I am healed. Who is that? I said, who is getting healed there? You are the one, Mark, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Nobody will have power to kill you. They will not terminate your life. They will not terminate your progress. You will not die in anybody's hand. And they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. You recover in Jesus' name. Come back. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. Pitiful prayer. Pitiful prayer. When you see people, what they're going through. And then they confess. They said, I want to tell you something. This is my fault. I was warned. The word of God came to me. I shouldn't have gone that direction. I shouldn't have done that thing. I shouldn't have joined that company. I shouldn't have gotten myself involved. But you know, I did in disobedience. And now this has come upon me. And so hear their story. And they confess their fault and how their hand was in this and they got involved 
your pity for as a child of God. You have the nature of God. Look at verse 11. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and ye have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very, give me the word there, pitiful and of tender mercies. And you have the nature of God. And after they confess their sins, you say, don't worry about that, you know. Even myself in the past, I got into a similar problem, and the Lord was merciful. And I can understand what you are talking. I can identify with you in the problem you're relating, narrating. And when you have that pitiful prayer, the Lord will answer. Somebody said a good amen. First Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Be pitiful. That's what God will do. He pities the sinner. He pities the one suffering because of his faults. And so you'll not condemn them. You'll not say, so you did that. You went that far. You put your hand in something like that. Don't question them like that. They're discouraged already. Don't destroy them. Be pitiful and pray for them. Come back to James chapter 5. And we're reading here now from the second part of verse 16. James chapter 5, second part of verse 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, tell me, availeth much. Prevailing prayer. Prevailing prayer. You take that problem to the Lord. You take that challenge and that mountain to the Lord. And you say, by the grace of God, the blood of Jesus has washed me, cleansed me, made me pure, made me righteous. And because of that, I put on the righteousness of Christ. And it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much your prayer will avail your prayer will prevail look at first john chapter 3 verse 22 first john chapter 3 verse 22 and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing is in his sight. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Anybody going to receive there today? Of course, you are going to receive. Number six, look at James chapter five. And I'm reading from verse 17. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly, 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 that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth, but the space of three years and six months. Passionate prayer. Passionate prayer. He wasn't praying and dozing, praying and sleeping. Praying and yearning, praying and tired, and praying and wanting to go to sleep. He said, this one concerns the nation, and this is a great problem. And this must be something you know, that I express to the Lord with great passion and great conviction. And he prayed, and God answered. Passionate prayer. Look at first. Kings 
chapter 17 and I read from verse 1 first Kings chapter 17 verse 1 he had prayed and now he came and Elijah the Tishbite who was of the inhabitants of Gilead said unto Ahab as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand you have been standing before him praying passionately earnestly before my stand there shall not be dew nor rain this years but according to my word he had the key what he lodged on earth was lodged in heaven what he opened on earth was opened in heaven you have the key whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven Whatever you lose on earth today will be loosed in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Passionate prayer. Come to verse 18 of James chapter 5. James chapter 5 verse 18. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Your business will bring forth. Your family will bring forth. Your spiritual life will bring forth. He prayed again. You will pray. This one is persevering prayer. Persevering prayer. Look at it. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. In your family, abundance. In your life, abundance. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth. And he put his face between his knees. And said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, There is nothing. I say, Lord, you not say, Okay, God changed his mind. God never changes his mind. I said God never changes his mind. He said there's going to be abundance of rain. It's going to come. And he said, go again. He went the second time. There's nothing. Persevering. Go again the third time. He went. There's nothing. Persevering prayer. Go and see that again. He went the first time. He came back. There is nothing. Elijah is not the man to give up. And you are not the brother to give up. You are not the sister to give up. Go again. The first time he came back, there is nothing. You must go back again. Go back again. The sixth time he said, There is nothing. And now he said, Go again. The seventh time, persevering prayer, you will not give up. I said, you will not give up. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's sand. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, and it comes to pass in the meanwhile, while the message was going on, the heaven was black with clouds and winds. And there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. As you're riding back in your bus, in your car, in the taxi, or whatever, on your motorcycle, whatever. As you're riding back today, great abundance is following you. And the great ministration is being fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. 
personal prayer is going to be answered today pastoral prayer going to be answered today powerful prayer is going to be answered today beautiful prayer is answered today prevailing prayer answered today passionate prayer answered today persevering prayer answered today i rejoice with you today is the day of your breakthrough it's the day of the moving of your mountain and it's the day of the blessing of the lord upon your life before you stand up to pray ezekiel chapter 34 i'm reading from verse 26 ezekiel chapter 34 ezekiel chapter 34 verse 26 and i will make them and the places round about my heel a blessing and i will cause the shower to come down in a season this season and there shall be showers of blessing and there shall be showers of blessing where i said where in your life when now at this very time showers of blessing there showers of blessing there i said showers of blessing there over there i said showers of blessing there open your mouth open your mouth and talk to the lord it's a new day it's a day of blessing it's a day of deliverance and it's a day of miracle it's a day of power manifestation it's a day of all your sorrow all your sin and all your suffering being taken away it's your day it's your day you have persevered as an afflicted saint tell the lord no more complaint no more complaint no more complaint no more murmuring call upon the name of the lord the lord is going to answer your prayer today the lord is going to answer never give up never give up never give up to your sorrows jesus will be them depart trust in the lord trust in the lord sing when your trials are greatest trust in the lord and take heart talk to the lord right now when the son of man comes shall he find face in the earth have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have, he shall have, he shall have whatsoever he says. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. heal the sick will break the yoke will destroy the evil thing god answers prayer god answers prayer believe the lord begin to thank him be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. Another year, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He was fully persuaded that what God has promised is able to perform. And therefore, he gave, he was giving glory to God, calling those things which be not as though they were giving glory to God sing when your trials are greatest trust in the Lord and take heart in Jesus name we pray 
God has answered your prayer. No more crying. No more complaining. No more criticizing. No more murmuring. No more going from valley to mountain. God has answered my prayer. Where are you? Where am I? God has answered my prayer. God has answered your prayer. Keep up those and Father, in Jesus' name. You are a God that will not fail. You are a faithful God. You have promised your children. And you have told us how to pray. And we have prayed in that way. And I'm asking, Lord, let there be a performance, a fulfillment in every life today in Jesus' name. Wipe all their tears away. Take all the affliction away. Heal all the sicknesses in their body. And break every yoke in their lives and set them completely free from every walk of the devil in jesus name i pray lord where there's been mountains remove that mountain now where there's been oppression remove that oppression now where there's been curable disease remove that disease now and where the paths of darkness have been walking lord i pray you rebuke the enemy on their behalf in jesus name the arrows of the enemy will not take effect in the lives of our children. The enemy will have their arrows for themselves. But your people are free from today in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you do something definite in every life. Something new in every life. Something spectacular in every life. Something unbelievable in every life. And Lord, I pray they will see the miracle. As the servant went and came back, saw nothing, and Elijah said, no, you must see. Lord, I pray the people of God, everyone without exception, you must see your miracle today. And every hindrance is cleared out of the way. And I pray that the fire of the Lord will burn every chaff and every yoke and every oppression and every evil thing from the lives of your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm assuring your people according to your word, you have answered their prayer. Joy instead of sorrow. Singing instead of crying. Rejoicing instead of sadness. I pray, Lord, as a confirmation in every life. I know it is done. I know it is done. As they go riding back home, they ride on the wings of the wind. They ride about their problems. And Lord, let the sunshine come. In the path of everyone who has been going through darkness. You're saved. You're healed. You're delivered. You're set free. Your mountain is gone. The darkness is blotted out. Continue now in a new life. In the sunshine of answered prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the confirmation. In Jesus' name, I pray. The first authorized biography of the founder of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry is finally out. Kumuyi, defender of the faith. Detailing his early years, his conversion, his call, his conviction, his exploits in ministry, his journey from then until now. Read the first-hand account of people who witnessed each event. Find out his vision, his mission, his passion, and the reasoning behind his actions. In the book, Kumuyi, Defender of the Faith. Find out the story behind monumental moments of Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi. Moments that are now forever act in history. With forward written by Pastor E. A. Adeboe of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. This is the book, The World 
has been waiting for. Kumui, Defender of the Faith. Coming soon in all leading bookstores. Watch out.